What's up guys, Marek here with Trek Nutrition. Uh, welcome to another episode of Ask the Trainer. Uh, really good episode, very interesting. Today we're gonna answer a million dollar question in the fitness industry. Basically, how to lose uh, stomach fat, how to lose belly fat. Before we get down to the basics, I want you to look at, the, at this subject from a whole uh, perspective. Uh, for, just for a second, think about how come there are uh, certain people out there that can uh, you know, eat whatever they want, they can eat pizza, ice cream, uh, junk food, fast food, and they're still pretty, pretty lean, while some other people, you know, even though they, they follow like a pretty uh, strict diet and they, still, they, they exercise regularly, they're still struggling with, uh, with f fat de deposits in different areas uh, of their body. Uh, uh, just think about, you know, how come when we are in high school or in college, you know, we can eat whatever we want and we can, we can, you know, add some muscle mass fairly easily and we can burn fat like uh, without any problems. And then when, when we hit 40 and 50, uh, you know, we gain like two kilograms of, of fat just from one visit to McDonald's. I want you to uh, answer one question. What makes your body build muscle and lose fat? Uh, is it your diet or is it exercise? Okay, I can't really, you know, tell what you're saying, you know, in front of your computer or uh, your phone, uh, but the, the answer may actually su surprise some of you. It's hormones. Hormones basically uh, dictate whether our body uh, uses calories for energy or stores them as fat. Uh, every time we, we, we eat something, uh, there are many different chemical, very complex reactions happening in, in, in our body. So for example, when we eat something sugary, uh, uh, a carbohydrate source, uh, we cause our body to, to release insulin, to basically capture that glucose from the bloodstream and deposit it as glycogen in the liver, uh, skeletal muscles, uh, or eventually as fat. On the other hand, when, we, when the, the blood sugar is low, uh, the pancreas re releases glucagon. And glucagon basically uh, breaks down glycogen stored again in the liver, skeletal muscles uh, or fat and supplies glucose to the bloodstream. Uh, if I confused you or lost you or bored you to death uh, at some point of this, of this explanation, uh, the, the, don't worry, basically the only thing that you have to know is that uh, it is crucial uh, that every time we, we eat something, it causes our body to react in a very specific way, way to, the, to that food. So that's why uh, whenever we're talking about uh, toning and, and losing fat and, and cutting weight, I always believe that uh, the quality of calories that, that you consume matters uh, more than the quantity of, of calories that you eat. Obviously, you can, you can also gain weight from eating, uh, you know, good stuff, quality stuff, uh, but it's much harder than, you know, uh, gaining bad weight from, from eating junk, from eating low uh, quality calories. The good news is that we can actually uh, affect our body to produce different hormones. We can influence our body to uh, to secrete good hormones and, and to react in a very specific way to basically uh, create like an optimal environment for losing fat and, and building muscle. Okay, so as mentioned at the very beginning, uh, obviously genetics play a huge role uh, when it comes to uh, hormones and how much of each of those hormones uh, our body uh, releases. For example, some of us may produce a lot of insulin, uh, some of us may produce very little bit of, uh, of that hormone, and that basically will affect our uh, physics uh, as a result. So uh, how can we actually find out what our hormonal state actually is? So obviously the, the best way to do this uh, would be to go to a doctor, endocrinologist, and basically uh, get, get tested and to see uh, like a whole spectrum of different uh, vital hormones uh, if they are you know, within specific boundaries. The, the easier way that you can actually do at home will be basically to uh, look in the mirror. Uh, depending on different hormone levels, our body will 
uh, deposit fat in very specific areas. So starting from the bottom, uh, you know, uh, we have cankles. A very common problem uh, for a lot of people uh, when we can observe a large deposits of, of, of adipose tissue, so, so fat, around the ankle area. Uh, and I'm not saying that, you know, when somebody is just uh, heavy or overweight and they have also a lot of fat in, in that region, you know, that's basically caused by, by some hormonal uh, deficiencies. I'm, I'm talking about very significant disproportion. So we are fairly lean, you know, uh, in the body overall, but we are actually uh, suffering from, from some fat deposits in the ankle area. So people with that problem may actually have uh, problems with uh, growth hormone. And growth hormone is usually, or not usually, but growth hormone is released during sleep. So uh, when people suffer from cankles, uh, you want to pay more attention to your sleep sleeping patterns. So whether or not you get enough sleep, is it a good quality sleep? Do you get, you know, seven or eight hours of sleep at a time? Or, or do you, you know, sleep a couple of times during the day, taking like three or four uh, our uh, naps. The next body part going up, uh, we have uh, thighs. So if you notice that uh, majority of, of fat or the adipose tissue is actually located in your, in your thigh area, then uh, this may be caused by uh, very high levels of estrogen. Uh, obviously, if that's, that's actually the problem, you probably want to go and see the doctor and maybe they can prescribe some medication to basically get you in sync with this, with this hormone. But uh, you should definitely avoid eating from plastics, uh, eating dairy products, uh, soy products, and even dr drinking coffee. Because things like that may actually spike your estrogen levels even higher. Going up from, from the thighs, we have love handles. So basically fat deposits around the waist area. A pretty common problem for a lot of people. And this is actually uh, caused by really high levels of, of insulin. So if your body actually likes to, to secrete a lot of insulin, you should uh, counteract it by eating uh, foods uh, very low on, on, on the glycemic index. So, uh, you know, nothing, uh, no, no simple sugars, uh, you know, complex carbs and, and things like that. Basically stay away, avoid the insulin spikes that are caused by eating uh, simple sugars and, and carbs in, in general. Uh, after love handles, we finally get to the stomach problem that brought us here in, a, in the first place. Uh, when people store fat just in the stomach area. So let's say you're fairly lean, pretty much even shredded, but you're still, your, your six pack is still covered by, by a little bit of fat. This may be due to high cortisol levels. Cortisol is a, is a stress hormone. So it's basically released by the body when, when we are uh, stressed, when we are nervous. Uh, and uh, it is usually the highest first thing in the morning. So for, for people that are trying to actually uh, bring the, the cortisol levels down, you should probably avoid uh, working out in the morning because any type of workout uh, is basically additional stress to the body. So uh, you should probably not uh, work out in the morning if, if it's possible, obviously, and try to you know, hit the gym uh, in the afternoon or even in the evening if, if possible. Also, uh, this is actually a pretty common mistake that a lot of people do. Uh, basically, when you suffer from, from stomach fat because of the cortisol levels, what do people normally do? They hop on a treadmill. And actually, uh, the, it's been proven scientifically that cardio, like the, low, like the steady pace uh, cardio, basically causes the, the cortisol levels to, to, to spike even higher. So for people that suffer from this problem, uh, you probably want to focus on high intensity interval training and just, you know, old fashioned lifting weights uh, should be the best type of exercise you want to use uh, when your cortisol levels are, are high. Okay, so from, from the stomach, uh, we go up to uh, upper back region. So again, uh, I'm just talking about very significant, significant disproportions. So uh, when you notice that your body basically stores body fat in the, in, the, in the upper back region, that may actually indicate some problems with your thyroid, uh, especially uh, the hormone called thyroxine. Uh, if our body doesn't produce enough thyroxine, then it will be 
uh, it will be most likely storing fat in the upper back region. What you can do about it to basically uh, help your body uh, level this out, uh, you want to focus on eating uh, dark leafy uh, green vegetables like kale and spinach. You want to add a lot of sesame to your, to your diet because it also supports your, your uh, thyroid. And obviously, you know, if this is a severe problem, uh, seeing an endocrinologist would be probably a good idea as well. Okay, so from the upper back region, we'll move to uh, triceps. So the back, of your, the back of your arms. If this is your problem uh, area, then basically this may indicate low testosterone levels. And this may actually surprise some of you, but this applies to both women and men. Yes, women also have testosterone. Uh, and when you actually suffer from low testosterone, you will be more likely to store fat uh, in the back of your arms, which may, may be a, a problem for, for, for some of you. Uh, how, to, how to basically uh, naturally increase the, the levels of testosterone? That's another one million dollar question for a lot of people that uh, you know, work on their physiques naturally, but uh, obviously you want to, you want to focus on, on uh, products like eggs, avocados, uh, oily fish like, like salmon, and the best way to, to increase your testosterone naturally is obviously lifting heavy weights. Okay, guys, to be honest, this is basically, uh, this covers most of the different regions that our body will be, will be storing fat. I really hope that you know, my explanation makes sense. So just to summarize everything that, uh, that I said, obviously the best conclusion is eat healthy and exercise but that's what everybody, everybody says. But remember, uh, this is basically, the hormones are basically one, one of the reasons why uh, certain diets or, or exercise plans uh, work for one person, but does, don't work for uh, a different person. Just because we are very unique. Every, every single one of us is a different person with different hormones. So knowing and observing your body will actually give you an idea of what to expect. Uh, knowing your weaknesses and your strengths will actually allow you to develop a very effective and very unique uh, exercise and diet, diet plan uh, for yourself. Uh, guys, I really hope that you'll use this guideline. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, in order to do that, you'll have to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, make sure you post more questions and I'll be, I'll be happy to answer them in the next episode. Thank you so much and keep working hard. Thanks.